Next morning we set out early from the Stracy Arms. An interesting sky, but not much sun. We're heading down the Bure towards Yarmouth. It's flat countryside, and apart from the occasional windmill, there's not much to see. Great Yarmouth is a historic place. Dickens wrote David Copperfield here and describes it as the finest place in the universe. Daniel Defoe wrote about it in his journals, and long before that, the Romans were here. It lies at the confluence of the rivers Yare and Bure. This is where they meet and flow out to the North Sea. But we're heading up the Yare through Braden Water and what was in times past a large bay. Braden Water is the biggest expanse of water on the Broads. Uh, it goes out to the sea and it is connecting the northern and the southern broads through Great Yarmouth. It is actually very nice to travel across here and today, though it's quite windy, it's still quite pleasant. Our destination is St. Olive's. Lunch in the Bell Inn. Though the sun has deserted us, we're able to moor up right outside the pub, which is the oldest recorded pub on the Broads. After lunch, we decided to visit the St. Olive's Priory, an English heritage site founded in the early 13th century. Olaf was the 11th century king who converted Norway to Christianity. These ruins date back to 1216. It was finally suppressed by Henry VIII. Here the cloisters stood, and to the left was the church. This building is the refectory above and under Croft below. The Undercroft is a cellar or storage room, often brick-lined and vaulted, and used for storage in buildings since medieval times. The refectory or dining room was above. Refectory is from the Latin reficere, to make or restore. And refectorium means a place one goes to be restored, from which we get our word restaurant. This illustration here gives an idea of what it would have looked like around 1350. The canons here were priests and would have wanted to identify with the early apostles and so liked to eat in the upper room. After Henry VIII suppressed the monasteries, a house was built using the remains of the priory. On the top of the walls we can still see where the beams were placed. These are the ruins of that three-story house. Today llamas are kept nearby. The last time I saw a llama was in Peru. That's a long time ago. Then we continued our journey to Beckles. At Semilaton, the railway swing bridge had to open to allow a large yacht through. We tagged along though our boat would have been able to go under the bridge. It was the first time I actually saw it open. We had a pleasant cruise down to Beckles 
with interesting skies, though not much sunshine. Beckles is in Suffolk, and this part of the Broads is referred to as the Southern Broads. Beckles is an interesting place to visit, and it's well worth stopping off and exploring. After circling around, we continued to Ulton Broad. Geez, Nacho's snack on the way. We soon arrived in Ulton Broad, where we would moor up for the night. I feel exhilarated, and furthermore, Ulton Broad is another place that for me is full of memories. Plenty of places to eat, shops to replenish supplies. The key here has good shower and toilet facilities. The Wherry Hotel at the end of the Broad has great food. And just opposite the key, there are several restaurants. It's been another good day. Next on Broader File 2015, we resume our journey on a beautiful sunny day from Ulton Broad to Yarmouth, lunch at the ferry in Stokesby, through Akel, on a sailor's dream day. Up the northern broads again. Up the Thurn River to Potterhayam, the iconic bridge. A beautiful day. Enjoying the broads at their best. St. Bennett's, then a quick right turn, and we're coasting up the River Ent to Howe Hill and Barton and beyond. It only gets better. Don't miss this one.